might be in this position here. Don't 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 fight it too much here, especially if you know he's gonna get out. If you know he's gonna get out, he's front cup. You find find your different rest periods. You're able to just hold the dude, you're good here. The elbows, keep his head inside, be able to train him there. So just try not to make that mistake of uh, being in the position too long. John Jones had a nearly flawless victory at UFC 285, and it is apparently all thanks to Henry Cejudo. Ahead of his return, John Jones trained for a few weeks with none other than Henry Cejudo, in addition to his normal training team from Greg Jackson and company. Fans were curious to see if the Triple C would be able to help lead John to another championship, much like he did for Whaley Young and Davison Figueiredo. As it turns out, Training with a former Olympic wrestler and UFC champ champ has its benefits. Shortly after Jones was able to earn a submission win over Gon, Sekudo posted to Twitter to congratulate John on the win, while also patting himself on the back by showing footage of himself teaching the exact techniques Jones used on Gon. John Jones makes cryptic promise for Stipe Miocic matchup. UFC heavyweight champion John Jones has hostile intentions for his possible first title defense against Stipe Miocic. Talks of a fight between Jones and Miocic have taken place for years, stemming back to Jones' reign as the UFC light heavyweight champion. Miocic is regarded by many as the greatest heavyweight in UFC history, a title that Jones covets. Ahead of their potential fight, Jones is highly confident he'll make the Miocic matchup look almost as easy as his performance against Gon. During his UFC 285 post-fight press conference, Jones sent an eerie message to Miocic. My whole world is gonna be focused on him. This is the biggest opportunity in my life to beat the heavyweight GOAT, and I'm gonna give it everything I've got. Absolutely everything I've got. Jones said, listen closely. Say it respectfully to Stipe. I would take time off from being a firefighter right now. And I mean that with all due respect. Um, my whole world is going to be focused on him. This is the biggest opportunity in my life to beat the heavyweight GOAT. And I'm going to give it everything I got. Absolutely everything I got. Stipe's talking about the fact that he's heavier than me right now. You know, his head, his head is already in the wrong spot if he thinks weightlifting is going to beat me. He'll never be younger than he is right now. He'll never be faster. And um, I'm going to not only beat Sleepy Miocic, I'm going to finish Sleepy Miocic before the championship rounds. Stipe Miocic hints that showdown against John Jones could be his final fight. The long-awaited return of the fighter that many consider to be mixed martial arts GOAT didn't come without some significant questions, but at UFC 285, Jones silenced virtually any doubters he may have had. Making his heavyweight debut, the 35-year-old needed just over two minutes to submit former interim heavyweight champion Cyril Gaon and add a second UFC title to his already illustrious resume. Some of the UFC's best fighters were in attendance to take in the event, among them former heavyweight King Miocic. The 40-year-old caught up with ESPN MMA's Brett Okamoto after the event, and overall he didn't sound especially blown away by Jones' performance. It's a fight, you know, Miocic said. He won, good for him, you know, hats off. But unfortunately, he's got to fight me in July. Listen closely. You've done it all. Getting a chance to fight no, John. Getting a chance to fight John Jones, the greatest of all time. Take him out, let's grab him. You feel like that would be the last one for you? You feel like that, that's the one, like you go in, you win that, you drop everything and walk out, right? I mean, yeah, we'll <laughs> see what happens, but uh, I mean, listen, one fight at a time, but yeah, 100%. Uh, it's gonna go my way. When does training camp start? It's always starting. Bo Nickel responds to Jamie Pickett's possible appeal after UFC 285. Bo Nickel's promotional debut Saturday at UFC 285 was swift, but his victory will be formally appealed by opponent Jamie Pickett's team. The basis of the appeal revolves around a knee to the midsection by Nickel against the fence that occurred moments before a takedown that led to the finish. Pickett and his team think the shot was to the growing and illegal. Take a look at the apparent illegal shot. Jamie just gotta stay relaxed. Don't let him get that takedown, bro. Ooh, that was hard. That was that was that was that was low. That was low. That was low. 
Nickel was asked about this in the UFC 285 post-fight press conference, and the former Penn State University wrestling standout denied the strike was a foul and was puzzled by Pickett's team's appeal proclamation. Take a listen. Um, I think, honestly, I, I know exactly what happened. I mean, I hit him in the, in the leg, in the thigh, and uh, I had him in a bad position on the wall, you know, so he wanted to get off the wall, um, and he wanted the ref to stop it, which, if I would have actually hit him low, I would feel bad because I don't want to win that way. Like, I don't like, I'm not a cheater. I'm not somebody that tries to take shortcuts. And so if I did hit him low, I would have just relaxed probably or just like let the ref stop it. But uh, I didn't hit him low at all. So it's a weird move, bro. Shavkat Rachmanov calls out two-time UFC title challenger. Shavkat Rachmanov called out Steven Wonderboy Thompson for referring to him as a grappler. Before being matched up with Jeff Neal, Rachmanov was connected to rumors regarding a potential fight against Wonderboy. The matchup didn't materialize, but Thompson was candid about turning it down. The former two-time welterweight title challenger wasn't interested in fighting another grappling-heavy opponent. After an impressive performance against Neal at UFC 285, Rachmanov believes he proves to be more well-rounded than Thompson thought. Nomad addressed Wonderboy on Twitter by saying, Who's Grappler now? Once Wonderboy saw Rachmanov's comment on Twitter, he responded by saying, All due respect to you and your great performance, but zero out of four on takedowns doesn't make you not a grappler. Congratulations on your victory. Let's not forget you won by submission, but much love. Dan Hooker expects punishment from UFC for accusations against Islam Makashev. UFC lightweight Dan Hooker expects to face some form of consequences due to his allegations against champion Islam Makashev last month. During a recent interview with the All-Stars John Hyun Ko, Hooker spoke in depth about the situation. While he doubled down on his firm claim that Makachev has actions to answer for, the New Zealander suggested he's likely to feel the wrath of UFC higher-ups instead. The UFC don't care and you Zada don't care. Hooker said, Why do you think I'm the guy that come out and said something? I don't care. You don't think that I know there are gonna be consequences for what I said. You don't think I'm gonna be punished for what I said? I just don't care. Take a look. I said something though. like, why do you think I'm the guy that come out and said something like, I I don't care, like, I don't care, like, you don't, you don't think that I know that there are going to be consequences for what I said, you don't think I'm going to be punished for what I said, I just don't care, like, am I going to have some shape-ups or some daggers, Dazakhstanis over the next couple of years in the lobby of UFC events? I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. Do I care about confrontations um, <laughs> with, with other teams? No, I don't. Not a single bell. Do you think the UFC will punish Dan Hooker for his comments? That's all for today's video. If you want to know the latest UFC news, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell, and click the like button so you don't miss any details about the upcoming fights. Thanks for watching. See you soon.